We're in Cannes at MIPIM 2023 and we are joined on the set of Bay TV by Mrs. Lisette Van Dorn, CEO Europe at ULI and Mr. James Rankin, Head of Research and Insight at the Instant Group. Lisette Van Dorn, James Rankin, thank you for joining us on Bay TV. Great to be here. Uh, at MIPIM, you participated at a conference titled, and I quote, Bridging the Occupier Landlord Office Gap, What New Research Says About the Future of Workspace, where ULI and the Instant Group presented their recent report on the subject. Uh, what does this occupied, uh, Occupier Landlord Office Gap entail? Uh, maybe uh, Mrs. Van Dorn. Um, yeah, happy to start. Um, well, what we see happening is that the off, uh, occupiers following the pandemic, following other trends, following the energy crisis, their demands have changed very rapidly. And that is a, a combination of structural demand changes as well as cyclical demand changes. And maybe not surprisingly, but uh, for landlords it takes some time to respond to that. So that's also the gap we're looking at. And and for example, that entails that there's a much higher demand for flex space, and I think James can also mm. talk about a lot about that. Um, there's much more demand. Obviously, what we see now is with the pandemic where employers want employees to come back to the office because that's, let's be very clear on that, there's a real role for the office. Mm. But they haven't completely figured out yet what all those demands are. How many days, how many space they need, um, what other things they might need. Mm. And almost throughout that process, it's almost a journey that they try to figure out what they need. On top of the current economic uncertainty and the energy crisis, and what they want from the landlord is the flexibility to work out those demands. Mm. And that's not what landlords have been used to, because they've been used to 10-year contracts uh, and not so much on a day-to-day -day basis engaging with the tenant. So that's a large part of the gap we look at. Mm. Uh, James Rankin, uh, I, I see you uh, nodding in, a, in approval. Uh, I have to ask you also, how have occupier expectations uh, evolved over the last few years as the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and technology advancement uh, transformed uh, the, way, uh, the way we work, the way we go to the office, well, the way we occupy the working space? Um, I mean, I think what we've seen is the trends that we were seeing pre-pandemic just really accelerate. So that change has happened, but it was already started pre-pandemic. So yes, we shouldn't we shouldn't obviously. forget that. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of what that looks like, um, it's just around utilization. So how uh, can occupiers really make the most out of the space that they're 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 taking? Um, I think there's been a lot of uh, understanding that there was probably too much space for a lot mm. of companies, and they weren't really getting the full value out of it. Um, so what we're seeing now is occupiers looking to work with an asset owner, with a landlord, to work together um, mm. it, it going forward, a lot closer, a lot more alignment, a lot more conversation. I think one of the things that we found from the research that we, we did together was um, while we think we might have seen a lot of change already, actually there's a lot more to come. Mm. So it was about, I think the stat was 86% of the occupiers felt that their office portfolios today have uh, still don't meet the business demands and strategy um, that they have. So there's going to be a huge amount of, of change to come as well. Oh yeah, interesting. Uh, and keeping in mind that this transformation is uh, mostly ahead of us, uh, uh, maybe yeah. uh, then the question becomes, what are the, some key uh, solutions uh, that can be uh, maybe implemented or taken into account uh, to bridge this gap between occupier expectations and what uh, uh, office asset owners uh, are delivering uh, uh, in the workspace. Yeah, I mean, from, from my perspective, and, and Lisette's already mentioned it already. You know, the flexible element and the agility is is really key. I think it's also thinking about how occupiers are trying to use space. Um, so, for an asset owner, trying to provide multiple types of environment. Um, so it's not just sort of a static uh, or single engagement. It, it's much more of a kind of a customer journey and a customer-led approach. Mm. Um, I think that's something that we're, we're seeing a lot of at the moment. Lisette Van Dorn. 
Yeah, I would like to add to that because obviously we're in a time where climate change is all over us, where there's more and more demand for sustainability. And while before occupiers look more through the attractiveness to talent lens when addressing ESG, I think with the energy crisis, they've seen occupancy costs, total occupancy costs come up, go up massively. And they will definitely look at how to reduce that. Mm. So energy efficiency in the building is a key requirement. And I think overall also, for example, sustain the access to su- sustainable mm. transport options can people easily come to the office because as employees still f- trying to figure out whether they want to come back to the mm. office, the employer wants to make it as convenient as possible. And that is obviously, uh, that those are areas where the landlord can and needs to play a key role. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Lizette Van Dorn, James Rankin. Uh, sadly, that's all the time we have uh, today, but a lot of discussion ahead of us uh, as we look to uh, follow this transformation of the workspace. Uh, in the meantime, thank you for being with us on the set of BETV. Thank you, everyone uh, at home, for being with us as well. I'll see you soon on the set of BETV in MIPIM 2023.